Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Hockenberry and I'm the French horn professor at ISU in the School of Music. I'm looking forward to meeting you all in just a few months and congratulations on your acceptance into the School of Music at Illinois State. My claim to fame, if you will, around campus is that not only am I the horn professor, but I'm also a yoga instructor and I teach yoga classes at several different yoga studios in the Bloomington Normal area. I also uh, pretty often get invited to teach yoga classes within the various studios at ISU, so I could very well be a guest in your studio whether or not you play horn. I think the practices that we do in yoga are integral to what we do as musicians. So today I want to take you through some of my favorite yoga poses for musicians. These are poses that I practice every single day and you probably do too for some of these. I'm just going to show you ways to kind of check in with the alignment of your body uh, that are going to actually help you. They'll help you breathe better which helps you play your instrument better, will help you have better posture, and all of those good things that we need to play music. So, the first pose that we're going to do is Tadasana, or mountain pose. All uh, names of poses in yoga end with the word asana, which literally translates to pose or form. So this is Tadasana, mountain pose literally just standing up straight, but I'm going to teach you how to stand up straight. So we're going to start with our feet hips distance apart. The really cool trick here is that if you don't know what hips distance apart is, it's about the same length as one of your feet. So you can take one of your feet, turn it in so that the toe of your foot is touching the heel of your other foot, and then simply just spin back out and then you've got hips distance or close enough to it. So your feet are hips distance apart. You keep a tiny, tiny bend in your knees, what we like to call a micro bend. That just means that your knees aren't locked out. We never wanna lock our knees at any time. We can cause ourselves injury. It can actually cause us to pass out. So we wanna make sure that our knees are kind of loose with a micro bend in them. The next thing you're gonna check in with is your hips. You want to make sure that they're neutral, that they're just in their kind of central position. So your lower back's not too arched, it's not too concave, but just right. Draw your belly button in towards your spine, so you're kind of activating your abdominal muscles here. And the next thing we want to check in with is our shoulders. So we want to make sure our shoulders are really in a restful position. We know if we're stressed out or anything, our shoulders tend to do this. So this is a good practice of allowing them to rest down. The way that you can find that position is first draw your shoulders up by your ears. Then you're gonna allow them to roll back and rest in a downward position. So you can see when I did that, my collarbones became very wide, broad, and open, and I can take a better breath now. The last thing I'm gonna check in with is the top of my head, what we like to refer to in yoga as the crown of the head. And I'm gonna imagine that there's a string tied to the crown of my head and it's very gently pulling up. So I'm drawing the crown of my head, the top of my head towards the sky. That doesn't mean I look up, the crown of my head's not my forehead, right? It's the top. And you can open your palms up to face the front of the room. Now you are in mountain pose. Congratulations, you are doing yoga. Take a minute here to just close your eyes very gently. And if you want, you can ever so slightly rock back and forth on your feet, just shifting the weight between the balls of your feet and the heels of your feet. And then finding that central point where your weight is evenly distributed between those what we refer to as four corners of your feet, the left and the right side of the ball of the foot and the left and the right side of the heel of the foot. So this is your mountain pose. And if I think about how I'm going to either sing, uh, I'm already in a great posture for singing, maybe not with my palms open like this, but you get the idea. Or if I want to say, play my French horn, it's right here for me. So we're always coming from this base of support in our mountain pose. Our chest is open, ready to breathe, ready to sing, ready to play. 
we're in a great tall position. You can also take this same practice sitting down, right? So I'm sitting down here. I still want to be able to feel supported in my feet. And I'm gonna keep my upper body in that mountain pose, in that Tadasana position. So I'm still keeping my hips neutral. And if, if I'm slouching, that means my hips are concave, right? Or if I'm arching as too much, uncomfortable, just right in the center, still drawing the navel in towards the spine, still allowing the shoulders to rest down and back and still drawing the crown of my head up towards the ceiling. I'm still in mountain pose. So when you're sitting in ensemble, voila, you've got your perfect posture to play your instrument. So that's Tadasana, that's mountain pose. I'm gonna show you two other poses that I think really help open up the body to prepare for playing your instrument in a really nice way. The first one is a seated twist, which I'm gonna show you first from the chair since that's where I am. So I'm gonna scoot back just a little bit, but not very much. I wanna feel very, very grounded. You can see that my feet are firmly against the floor. My upper body is still in that Tadasana, that mountain pose. The first thing I'm gonna do is as I inhale through my nose, I'm gonna reach my arms over my head. And as I exhale, I'm gonna twist my torso to the right. My left hand is gonna to come to the outside of my right knee. And just cause this is the type of chair that I have, my right arm is going to wrap around the back of the chair. If that's not working with the type of chair that you have, you can just put your hand right behind you. There should be room because you're not sitting all the way back in your chair. And if it's available to you, you can certainly just gaze in the same direction that you're twisting, or you can gaze out over your right shoulder. That kind of completes the spinal twist here. And with each inhale I take, I'm lengthening my spine. I'm thinking about drawing my head up towards the sky. And each exhale ever so slightly deepens the twist. You can see my shoulders are still resting down. My collarbones are broad. Both of my feet are planted on the ground. And what we do on one side, we must do on the other. So on an inhale through the nose, I'm going to very slowly unwind, bring my arms back overhead. And exhale, do the same thing on the other side, finding the outside of my knee with the one hand and in this case, wrapping my arm around the chair. And since I gazed out over my shoulder on the other side, I'll do that here. Now, if you have any sort of neck injury or if your neck is even sore, you don't have to add the gazing out over the shoulder. You can just leave your head in line with the direction of your knee here. But my neck's doing okay today. So I'm going to gaze out over the shoulder. Going to breathe deeply here. I'm gonna to inhale to slowly unwind, bring arms back overhead. And I like to bring my palms together at heart center as I exhale. You can do this same pose sitting crisscross on the ground, if that feels better to you as you inhale arms overhead. And exhale, you still find the outside of your knee. You place the other hand on the ground behind you and twist open that way. Again, always coming out slowly, inhaling arms overhead. And exhale, we twist to the opposite side. Inhale, return to center. And exhale, bringing palms together. The last pose I want to show you today is a supported version of downward facing dog. You guys all probably know what downward facing dog looks like. Uh, downward dog is not a great pose for everybody to do, especially if you're brand new to yoga. It's this one, right? So what I'm gonna show you is a version that you can do with your chair. So I'm gonna stand behind the chair and I'm gonna place my hands, my fingertips on either side of the chair. Now what I'm gonna do from here, actually I'll turn it this way so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm gonna take an inhale 
And as I exhale, I'm simply going to walk backwards. And I'm going to let my head hang out between my arms, right? I'm going to look down towards my toes. And as you can see, I'm kind of in an L shape now, right? So I'm hanging out, looking at my toes. I have that micro bend in my knees that I was talking about. So you probably can't even see it, but it just means that my knees are not locked up. I'm relaxing through my arms. I'm not tensing my arms, right? They're still perfectly relaxed. They're, the chair is supporting the weight. The bottom half of my body is in Tadasana this time, right? Mountain pose. And this is gonna really open up our chest and our shoulders here. So we so often spend so much of our time slouching, which as we all know, is terrible posture as a musician. So this pose helps kind of correct that slouching. And you can linger in this pose for a while. You can actually stay here for a minute or two. You only want to go until you're feeling some sensation in your shoulders. If you're feeling any pain, you want to back out of it a little bit. So to do that, you just walk a little closer in towards your chair. And I was feeling pretty good, so I'm going to hang out here. And anytime you're hanging out in a pose for any extended length of time, more than just a few seconds, you want to come out slowly. So in a real practice, I would linger here for another minute or two longer, but we're going to pretend I already did that. And as I come out, again, I'm going to make sure I can bend my knees and I'm going to walk towards the chair slowly. Pretend you're going in slow motion because you're going to feel it in your shoulders. You just walk towards it until you're standing upright. You can do the same thing with a wall if you don't have a chair. So if we pretend there's a wall right here, I would simply place my hands against the wall, starting so that my arms are parallel to the ground, right? And I take my imaginary wall and I walk back and I do the same thing. So those are your foundational yoga poses today. The last thing I want to show you I actually want to guide you through it's just a little mini meditation meditation is part of yoga and it's super important as a musician that we're able to have the skills required in meditation we can use those same skills when we're performing because meditation contrary to what a lot of people believe is not clearing the mind or emptying the mind it's focusing the mind. It's focusing the mind on one thing. So when I say a guided meditation, I'm actually going to talk you through it. I'm going to talk you through this entire thing. It's going to be very short. Uh, that's the best way to start practicing meditation is just with short spurts because your mind is going to wander. So if you try to sit down and meditate for 20 or 30 minutes, it's probably not going to go great. So we're just going to do a couple of minutes here. I'm going to guide you through. The only thing you have to do is follow my directions. So I want you to find a comfortable seated position. It can be in a chair like me. It can be on the ground. You can even be lying down on your back if that's more comfortable for you. So once you've found that comfortable position, once again, if, if you're seated at all, I want you to take a moment to bring your shoulders up by your ears and then allow them to rest back and down again. Feel the crown of your head pulling up towards the sky and then allow the eyes to close. And just begin to notice your breathing. There's not a thing you need to change about your breathing right now. You just need to notice what it feels like. Breathing in through the nose and breathing out through the nose. As you inhale, feel the belly expand, followed by the sides of your ribs, the chest, and the collarbones. And as you exhale, feel the collarbones deflate, then the chest, the side ribs, and the belly. Inhale, belly, ribs, chest, 
collarbones. Exhale, collarbones, chest, ribs, belly. Taking full body breath. And as we sit here, breathing slowly, concentrating on the sensation of breathing, begin to feel the muscles in your forehead relax. The forehead becomes soft and smooth. The eyelids are soft and gentle. The cheeks are round. And your jaw hangs loosely. You may even find that as you allow your jaw to relax, let your lips begin to part. Feel the shoulders melt away from the ears. Allow the chest to be broad, open and free. this sense of relaxation in your face, in your shoulders and chest to radiate down the body, allowing the arms and legs to hang heavy, each exhale relaxing the torso, Continuing to breathe freely and fully. Allow the breath to deepen. And as the breath deepens, gradually allow your awareness to come back to your surroundings. Begin to wake up the body by making gradual small movements like wiggling the fingers, wiggling the toes. Perhaps rolling the shoulders slowly and gently. And as you feel ready, allow the eyes to blink open. Thank you for joining me in this yoga and meditation practice today. I hope you enjoy your summer and I look forward to seeing you either at ISU or in one of my yoga classes sometime very soon. The word namaste means the light in me sees and honors the light in you. So in yoga, we typically close practice with those words. So thank you so much for your time today. Namaste.